Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, folks. Michael Zuber, one rental at a time, back for his Thursday discussion with the CEO of Hemlane, Dana. How are you doing, Dana? I'm great. Thanks for having me back on the show. Absolutely. I love our conversations. We talk about the real world of being a landlord, mom and pop. It's all good stuff. Uh, so let's talk about the elephant in the room. Uh, we are both living through a time of pretty high CPI inflation. We have been seeing rents skyrocket. The national average is 14% for apartments and 18% for homes, higher than I have ever seen in 21 years of doing this. Uh, what are you thinking about inflation with renewals and all of this stuff going on? Yeah, we've gotten this question a lot within the past, especially two months. I feel like a lot of landlords, it took them a while to be like, oh, wait, I've been seeing this news. Should I be raising it by 15%? Legally, in some areas, you can't, right? There's caps 10%. Um, so there's you you do have to look at your local um, laws and um, county laws and just state laws. But mm -hmm. There's a couple of things I would say. Um, the first that I would say is when you're doing these renewals, you obviously look at market rates. What else is on the market and what is it going for? And more likely than not, it's going to be much higher, significantly higher than you expected from what your tenants are paying today. Right. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, and so the question is, well, should I be raising it up that much? Should I be raising it 10 percent, et cetera? And this is really where you need to know your know your tenant, which is like know your customer, KYC. Um, it's KYT in this case, um, because there's only two times that you can help like mitigate that risk with the tenant. And it's when they first move in, right? Because you're doing background and credit checks, you're qualifying them, you're doing back uh, landlord um, reference checks, everything you can do to help mitigate that risk when they're coming into the property from a financial perspective. Mm -hmm. Once you've signed an annual lease with them, you're stuck. You can't like they've lost their job. Mm -hmm. That also sort of becomes your problem because mm -hmm. you have an annual lease with them. And so the only other time to do it is during these renewals to really understand. Now, what's interesting is that um, the um, uh, um, consumer board um, for the US basically surveyed all the businesses, small businesses, as much data as they could get. And they said, hey, this is the highest we've ever seen increases in salaries as well. And they were citing two things. Obviously, there's more people changing jobs. You're seeing that. Um, but also they cited inflation. And, you know, here at Hemlane, we also took that into account with um, annual renewals of there's inflation. We have to make sure that we are able to make up for that. And so from that perspective, have that conversation with your tenant to basically ask them like, hey, how are things going? Has your income changed at all? If they've if it has increased by seven to eight percent, then you still meet those income to rent ratios if you're also increasing at seven to eight percent. But if they say, no, my income stayed the same, I don't expect it to go up, and you're doing this huge renewal, you have to understand how cost burdened they are and to make that decision and have a conversation with them of will they be able to afford the new rates if they've been really strong tenants like i'm a huge fan of being right under market rate with those renewals and rewarding tenants mm -hmm. and allowing them to stay in there for longer because turnover costs vacancy all of that factors into actually that costs you more in the end mm -hmm. um but really it's that kyc know your customer which is know your tenant and understand, hey, if I'm going to give them a 12% a increase, let's just say that your state allows that, mm -hmm. how does that impact their situation? Are they cost burdened now? And, and is that going to be more risky for you in the future? Um, so really knowing that, um, you know, I do know some landlords who do a second, like, background and credit check, have them reapply to the property. Mm. Not as much of a fan on that. I don't do that. Um, mm -hmm. But I, what I would do is have that conversation of also has your income changed because that's free for them to just give you that data mm -hmm. um, for you to really understand that um, and let them know, hey, this is what I'm thinking. Do you want to make sure from that perspective, there's no cost burden? So I yeah. want to hear your thoughts on it. Um, yeah. but that's kind of how I think about it. Yeah. It's so, I mean, first off, I would never do another re. I wouldn't do another criminal. Yeah. I would, that's yeah. just, this. Like, they're already my customer, right? I've, I already made that decision. So I, yep. I, I, I don't do that. Uh, I'm sure others do, but I don't. Uh, one thing to think about is, man, I've seen some crazy rent increases. Miami, Florida, 38%. Wow. 
and that's the average. I mean, I can't even imagine, I can't even fathom raising my rent 38% year one to year two. Uh, so again, what I would what I would tell folks is if you're in my course, there's a gentleman named Dion from Dion Talk talks about his binder strategy. Yeah, it basically means go out and look at like uh, properties of yours, which is easier to do today than ever before, and really figure out where you're at. And then Dion actually uses a binder and sits down with his tenant and says, "Hey." This is what's going on around you. And he works the binder strategy where the tenant actually asks for the rent increase. Always below market, right? So if market was 1800, yeah. it might, yeah, it might go to 1750 or 17 and a quarter. Uh, Dion's talked about it lots of times. <laughs> and um, the beauty of the strategy is the tenant asks for it. So you know they can afford it, yeah. or at least you can presume, presume that they afford it. Uh, so I like that strategy. If you can do it, um, I really have a problem raising rents. I have a problem raising rents 10%. Yeah. Right. I mean, it's just, it, I've been doing this so long. It's abnormal. Unless I'm buying a building, it's under market. You know, the plan was to do that. I'm just talking traditional ownership here. Uh, however, I live in a state that has rent control. Uh, thank you, King uh, Newsom. <laughs> Uh, I now, I now unfortunately have to do rent increases every year. Uh, yeah. And in the state of California, I believe the cap is 10%, 5% plus CPI, which is going to be 10%. Um, so King Newsom has made me have to raise rents every year. Otherwise I get behind and I can never make up, which is not a strategy I like. I like to, I used to like to like go, do every other year. Uh, yeah. But now that's a a strategy that King Newsom doesn't like. So um, we now have to raise rents every year. Um, in some cases, 10%, which I don't like doing, but uh, it's, it's um, rent control is not a good thing. Rent control feels good for a moment, but it ends up hurting the exact people they're trying to help. Yeah. Uh, and um, yeah, it's, it's not a good thing. Yeah. Yeah. No, I, I, I couldn't agree more on that. Um, so yeah. And, and I love the binder strategy to your point. Yeah. So a lot of good stuff. So again, uh, what I would tell a landlord out there to do today, uh, first off, congratulations. I never would have, you, I could never have guessed a city would go up 30 plus percent in rent. And that in, in like Phoenix is 19%, Houston's 18%, just crazy rent growth. So uh, go figure out what it is for your market. Uh, it is more for houses than apartments, just so you know. Uh, but yeah, uh, you know, your costs are going up. Taxes are going up. Uh, service calls are going up, uh, insurance is going up, property taxes, it's, it's a problem. So uh, make sure you're doing it, but do the right thing. If you like the tenant, you know, a little bit under market, do the right thing because a turnover is far more expensive. And the last thing I'll say about this is if I was going to do a $20 raise or something like that, which I historically used to do, um, it very likely I wouldn't do that because a $20 raise means 240 bucks a year and a turnover is probably two grand. Uh, so there is a point where it just doesn't make sense, uh, in my opinion. Yep. Yeah, that, that's great. Cool. Well, do me a favor. Where can people go get this amazing 30-day trial? You've done a PDF and the videos on how to do it. Uh, where can they sign up for 30 days to play with it? Yeah, you can go to www.hemlane.com, H-E-M-L-A-N-E.com, um, and just mention one rental at a time for 20% off your first year. Um, however, you do get a 30 day free trial. Um, so you can try it for free. Awesome. Oh. Thanks. Thanks, Dana.